Well, we're going to um, talk today about the story of Joseph, the story of Joseph in Genesis 39. And as we're going there, um, I'd like to look at Hebrews 10, 22 through 24. Uh, go ahead and you can turn to Genesis 39. I'll read Hebrews 10. So let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. That's what we just did with communion. And let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. Let us consider one another in order to stir each other up to love and good works. And one more scripture I want to read to you is Romans 10, 9 and 10, which you probably know by heart, that if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart, one believes unto righteousness and with the mouth, confession is made. This is a key word unto salvation with the mouth confession is made into or unto salvation are you saved before you say anything no when you say it you're saved you confess unto salvation is the key that's basically the key point today you're going to confess into salvation if that's how you got into the kingdom guess what this principle works in the kingdom it works to get into the kingdom and it works within the kingdom confession is so important you confessed your salvation you weren't saved until remember you were unsaved and then you confessed that you were saved and that Jesus is Lord. When you confess Jesus is Lord, he became your Lord. Conf you confessed and he became. Your words are really important. You are confessing into, amen? For the scripture says, whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. And we're gonna look at the life of Joseph. And Joseph was kind of like a cork. You couldn't keep him down. You, you push the cork mm -hmm. down to the bottom of the cup mm -hmm. and whoop, it pops right back up. Mm -hmm. And you push the cork down and that cork is just trying to find its way up. And as soon as it gets an opportunity, whoop, it's mm -hmm. going to come to the surface. And that's the way we are as Christians. Stuff comes against us. Stuff happens. Whoop, we recover. Stuff happens. Whoop, we end up back on top again. One of the key factors is your declaration yes. of Amen. favor, your declaration of the covenant, your declaration that God is living on the inside of you, your declaration that this is going to work out well. This is going to work out for your benefit. You are coming up, you are coming out, and you are going over the top. Amen? Yes. Now, you may not be looking like that before you say it. But confession is made unto or into your next chapter. Confession is made into health. Confession is made into prosperity. Confession is made into abundance. Confession is made into the next chapter of your life. Where are you going next? Where do you see yourself next? Where, you want to, where do you want to be next? Your mouth is your ticket from here to there. Now, obstacles may come up. Discouragement comes to everyone. But it matters what you say. For instance, Joel Osteen was doing great, and they, were, they had just purchased the compact center. Now, there were lots of miracles along the way to getting their completion of their purchase of the compact center. Tons of miracles took place. It was wonderful. But they had exhausted absolutely 
all of their resources. They had pulled as hard as they could on all of their people to give. Everybody had given to the edge of their faith level. And they got the engineers together and they, they got the whole team together and they said, all right, so now we got the compact center. What's it going to take to make this into a church? Uh, we, we need uh, children's wings. We need offices. We need a uh, broadcast uh, department, all that kind of stuff. What is it going to take to make this what we want it to be? And they came back with a budget and they met with Joel and they told Joel the budget. He said, this just floored me. They said the budget was between 80 and 100 million dollars additional. After they had purchased the compact center, they had to pay 80 to 100 million to have their first service. Ow. And so Joel said, after I picked myself up off the floor, I knew not to open my mouth. I knew I knew not to say the wrong thing. And it's, it's cute. He said, all I could do was I could declare I have the favor of God. And that's all he did. That was as far as his faith could go, was to just say, the favor of God is on us. The favor of God is with us. He's taken us this far. He's going to take us all the way there. And the favor of God is with me. The favor of God is with me. And that was his confession in the face of this ginormous obstacle this ginormous bill. So a couple of weeks later, or maybe a, a couple of days later, whatever it is, they meet with their bank, their bank that got them this far, their, their lender, and their lender sits down with them and, and they said, uh, it's gonna be 80 to 100 million. We're gonna to need to borrow some money to, to get this going. And the bank goes, uh-uh. <laughs> the bank says, uh, we'll lend you about this much, and uh, we can kind of do about that much, and I think you're going a little bit too far, and uh, mm -hmm. you know, you're just you're just believing too big there, Joel. And uh, they, he said, I walked out of that meeting even lower, and I knew not to say anything. Mm -hmm. yeah. I just yeah. declared the favor of God. The favor of God is on us. The favor of God is on you. The favor of God is on you, Mark Gillum. The favor of God is on us. The favor of God is on the Langers. The favor of God is on the Fitzpatrick Lewises. The favor of God is on Jasmine. The favor of God is on Kathy and Shanyi and Ashley and Margaret and Marnie and Susie. <laughs> the favor of God is on Tina. The favor of God is on everybody here. The favor of God, hallelujah. The favor of God is on Stone and Laura. The favor of God, hallelujah. The favor of God is on us. The favor of God is on us. The favor of God. The favor of God is going to take you into your next chapter. The favor of God is going to get you all across Africa. How many countries in Africa are you going to? The favor of God will take you there. The favor of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, Joel Osteen goes to another uh, bank meeting. He gets to the next bank meeting and guess what? They had already written a loan commitment for the full amount. It wasn't even this bank. And it was this, this bank, they'd never worked with this bank. And this bank wanted their business and said, we're gonna give you the full amount. We're gonna give you a good interest rate and we want your checking accounts and we are going to back you and we're gonna give you a line of credit. We're mm. gonna do this, we're gonna do that. And he said, that felt like the favor of God. <laughs> And that was the favor of God. Yeah. Did he have the did did he have that banking relationship in the beginning? He didn't have it. It wasn't there. He was confessing, I have the favor of God. 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 That confession is the railroad track that he's laying out in front mm. of the engine. Mm. And then the engine can just come right on down the track. Your confession is building a road. Your confession is building a road to your future. Your confession is building a road to Sacramento, Mark Ella. Your confession is building a way for the next million dollars. Your confession is building a way for you to go to the next place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Glory to God. So in Genesis chapter 39, Joseph has been um, taken down to Egypt and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian bought him from the Ishmaelites who had taken him down there. Verse two of Genesis 39. And the Lord was with Joseph. Is the Lord with you? Absolutely. You're in covenant with God. You have celebrated that covenant in communion today. And the Lord was with Joseph and he made him a successful man. And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord made all he did to prosper in his hand. So Joseph found favor. Joseph found favor in his sight and served him. The Lord was with Joseph. The Lord is with you. The favor of God was on Joseph. The favor of God is on you. The Lord is with you. The Lord is with you. And you declaring his favor is opening new doors. Is opening new doors. It's, it's taking you into that next place. Patricia and James have favor in Ireland, have favor in the United States. And it's opening doors for them. It's opening doors for Evan's real estate business. It's opening doors. It's opening doors. It's opening doors. And it's taking Emmy's um, healthcare business to new levels. It's opening doors for Shani. It's opening doors for Marnie. It's helping Marnie stay safe on her job. Hallelujah. And it's helping Marnie go to the next level. And then Joseph's, um, well, Potiphar basically made him over, made Joseph overseer of his house and all that he put his, and he put all his house under Joseph's authority. So it was from that time that he made him the overseer of all his house and all that he had. And the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. The Lord is blessing Cape Coral Hospital for Emmy's sake. Mm -hmm. And the blessing of the Lord was on all that he had in the house and in the field. The Lord is blessing places because you're there. And you can pray over places. You can pray over things because you're there. That place is blessed. I worked at Great Western Bank on State Street in Santa Barbara, and a pastor's wife prayed over every chair in that place before every, every morning, every weekday morning. Every chair in that second floor of Great Western Bank had the whole loan department and had the whole appraisal department and underwriting all on that floor. And this one lady would go into every office she could get into and just lay hands on every chair and pray over every chair. That was the best work environment I have ever worked in in my entire life. We had so much fun. It was, it was, it was a family. It was, and the love of God, she prayed the love of God into the place. Can you imagine that? Bankers all being loving. <laughs> it was true. We, it's what we had. So everything that was left in Joseph's hand prospered. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So then um, here's, the, here's the thing. If Joseph had seen himself as anything other than the favored son of his father, mm -hmm. if he had started to see himself as a slave, if he started to see himself as, oh, oh, woe is me, Eeyore, and his ears are kind of down, and Eeyore and in the Winnie the Pooh things was always talking about, it's always negative. Eeyore, oh, it'll probably rain. It'll probably rain. Well, what happens if Joseph had gotten the wrong mouth? What happens is when you start getting the wrong mouth and you start saying, I'm so mistreated. I'm just not where I'm supposed to be. I'm rah, 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 rah. What happens is it begins to justify bad behavior. It begins to allow people to start to sin. Well, therefore, I'm going to smoke pot. Well, therefore, I'm going to get drunk. Well, therefore, I'm going to do this. Therefore, I'm going to steal. Because I 
am mistreated. I'm mistreated in this situation. You don't know my situation. You don't know how bad it is for me. If he got into that context, he'd start to slip. And he could, and you won't get promoted once you start justifying mm -hmm. that wrong thinking and those wrong actions. Another one is the wrong words. You begin to start, oh, the boss is bad. Oh, the conditions are bad. Oh, the temperature is bad. Oh, this is bad. We're not getting paid enough. And, you know, the, the intercompany yakking can't be promoted. It's not promotable. It never says anywhere in the narrative about Joseph that he yacked about being in prison, in the pit, as a slave, or as mistreatment. And he was mistreated all the way through. But the favor of God was on him. And the favor of God is upon you. And confession is made unto confession is made into your salvation and into your next miracle so joseph then uh, has potiphar's wife go after him and if he saw himself as a mistreated da -da 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 -da, well here's here's a chance to sin and i might as well no he said no he ran away he gets thrown, he gets falsely accused, and he ends up in the dungeon. He went from bad to worse, but his mouth did not. His mouth did not get worse. And then he, uh, everything is put under his control in the dungeon. He's the boss of the dungeon. He's the, he's, he, his cork rises to the top of the dungeon. Even though he's under the palace, he's floating at the top. Of, of that pot. Well, God could promote that too. And then he starts getting the dreams and dream interpretation. And um, eventually he's taken from the pit to the palace. He's taken from the prison to the palace. It took many, many years. Is it taking a little while with you? Is your journey taking some time? It took a long time for that 17 year old to go in his 30s into the palace. He was mistreated for literally a lifetime. A long time he was mistreated. But he stayed faithful and he kept his mouth saying the right thing. The favor of God was upon him, and his confession was made unto. I declare the favor of God over your life. I thank God for favor in your situation now. I thank God for the favor of God that is upon you, taking you to the right doctors and giving you the right medical help. I thank you for the favor of God that is upon you and taking you and leading you to the right people and connecting you to the right people. You have the right connections. You're making the right connections because of the favor of God is giving you favor and leading you to the right people. And you're making the right connections all through your life, all through Ireland, all through the Hawaiian Islands, all through the peninsula. You are making the right connections. Hallelujah. Because of the favor of God that is upon you. Gloria Copeland confessed her way into a house. And it was the exact house that she wanted. She began to dream a house. And the Copelands believed that you couldn't use bank financing. And so the Copelands rented and rented and rented and rented. And Gloria began to design this house in her mind and began to confess, I have this kind of a house. It's this many bedrooms. It looks like this. It's a one-story house. It has this kind of a view. It has this kind of architecture. As she began to make those confessions, an architect was drawing that exact house for somebody else. 
and somebody else built the exact house that Gloria was confessing and talking about. And it began to be built the day she began to confess it. And somebody built that house and lived in it, enjoyed it. And Gloria kept confessing and confessing and confessing and confessing that particular house. And eventually moved into it as a renter. She goes, this is the house. This is the exact house I've seen in my mind. This is the exact house. This is our house, Kenneth. This is our house. And they moved into it. <laughs> and she said, well, this wall's not where it's supposed to be. And, and this, this bathroom's not the way I pictured it. And the master closet, not quite. Everything else is. I, she started remodeling <laughs> as a renter. And Kenneth's like, you can't remodel as a renter. And she's like, nope, this is our house. This is our house. We're going mm -hmm. to get this house. And she began kind of moving a few things and upgrading. But this is our house. And it's like, mm -hmm. and <laughs> Norval Hayes, Norval Hayes went to lunch with Gigi and I after speaking at our church. And Norval Hayes begins to tell us at, over lunch how in two offerings, in one weekend, in this one weekend meeting, he received the offering that paid for their house yeah. in cash. Yeah. No bank loans, no bank financing. Mm. That dream house that she confessed, confessed, was being built the day she started on it. She moved into it as a renter. Yeah. Oh, there it is. And then she made her little tweaks and she kept confessing, kept confessing. And in one weekend that house became theirs paid off totally. paid for paid, for paid in full paid in full in late 80s pricing you know so the big numbers today but um, still big numbers then for two offerings mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. hallelujah and norma was quite proud of it and, yeah. and, and he was he was very happy about it it was a fun story to hear yeah. beautiful story to hear norma's a real nice man and uh, we were very privileged to spend some time with him. Faith, serious faith. And just to be in the company of one of uh, God's generals like that was really mm -hmm. special. Gloria Copeland also says this, wondering is wavering. Well, I wonder, mm -hmm. well, I wonder. The devil asks questions to get Christians off track. He does it a lot. He'll ask you a question. Have you thought about what if it doesn't work? What if, what if, you know, all the, uh, you know, everything's for naught. What if everything's for naught? What if you just wasted your time? He throws in, he, he throws in little questions. And Christians who start playing with those questions can get in trouble. Don't wonder and waver hold fast your confession without wavering for he who promised is faithful hebrews 10 that's the first scripture i read hebrews 10 22 let us hold fast 23 let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering for he who promised is faithful glory also said consistency is key when it comes to healing, and she uses it for healing a lot. She says, consistency is key. You can't say it's, it's going, everything's going bad and everything's going good just because your mood changes. You've got to stay consistent with your confession or shut up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you get discouraged, <laughs> zip it. <laughs> Don't talk against yourself. Right, amen. 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 Stay positive. Stay positive. I bless this church. I bless your confession. I bless your thinking. I bless your hope. He's called the God of all hope. You should have good hope. Amen. Amen. Have good hopes. Amen. See a good future. Amen. Keith Moore um, began to confess and believe for a car, but he put a date on it and the date came and went. And then he dropped his confession and he started wondering and wavering and things like that. But then he picked that up, picked it back up again. 
I have a good friend who was confessing, I have $2 million in the bank making interest for me every day. I have $2 million in the bank making interest for me every day. I ran the calculations at 5%, which is what CDs are, play, are paying right now. $2 million in the bank is $100,000 a year. That's a good number. That's $8,333 a day, a, a month, a month, $8,333 a month. That's a, that's a good income. Passive income. That was his confession. I think he should pick it up, don't you? I haven't heard it in a while. I want to hear it more. I want to hear it every day. Two million dollars in the bank, making interest for me every day. Glory to God. Five percent interest is pretty good right now. So we're that's and that's uh, without much risk. That's basically guaranteed and FDIC insured. What's your confession? I like that. I got two million dollars in the bank, making interest for me every day. Hey, Joel Osteen said this $80 million deal is not going to be hard for us. Stretch. Yes, there you go. Gigi, Gigi said it right. Gigi just said stretch. Yes, it's a stretch, right? So $2 million in the bank. I'm watching some eyes kind of go, you know, and they're just, you're, you're, I can see calculations being made in your brain. It's hard to see yourself going to the palace when you're in prison, but the favor of God was upon Joseph. It was hard for Joseph to see, but God had given Joseph a dream when he was a young boy and he saw the other sheaves bowing down to his sheaves. God had given Joseph a dream that he was going to be exalted at some point. Hallelujah. God has given you a dream. God has given you a task. God has given you ideas. God has given you things. And don't lose hope. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised is faithful. And let us make that confession into or unto the dreams and visions God has given you for your life. Close with this story. I was um, in a smoothie shop yesterday. And while I was waiting for my smoothie, another guy uh, orders his smoothie. And he was, he seemed older than me. And he seemed like he'd lived a hard life. His hands were shaking. His hair was gray. But I could tell we weren't that far apart in age. But to look at us, he'd lived a harder life and I got a word of knowledge for him and I uh I went up to him and I said sir uh, our church is experimenting with uh, words of knowledge I wouldn't I how do I say that? our church is trying to hear the voice of God and practice on hearing the voice of God can I tell you what I think I heard God say and he goes at first he's like <laughs> and, you know, church and you know, and and uh, the body language was definitely this way and but I said can I tell you what I felt like God said and he's like okay no well, cautious cautious warning warning and I said um I feel like God said that you were called to ministry a long long time ago and that you felt that calling and that calling is still there and he says, that's interesting you say that. <laughs> because I almost went to seminary as a kid. I almost went to seminary in my 20s. Wow. And I said, sir, that, that calling is still there. Mm. Keep being good. Keep doing good. Keep helping people. Because that calling is still there. Mm. Well, well, thank you very much. As he moved away from me rapidly. <laughs> <laughs> The truth. It was the right. truth. Yeah. It was the truth. God spoke to him. God had given him something a long time ago. And it's easy to let go of these things 
when the storms of life come against you. Mm -hmm. But like Keith Moore in the car mm -hmm. that he ended up getting, mm -hmm. sometime later after he mm -hmm. picked up the confession, mm -hmm. that confession will work for you if you'll pick it back up again and start saying, I got $2 million mm -hmm. in the bank making money for me every single day. That confession will work for you. That confession will work for you. So pick it back up. This is how I'm closing. Pick it back up. Pick the dream back up. Take that dream, dust that dr dusty little dream off and shine it up a little bit and put it out where you can see it and begin to talk about it. Because confession is made unto and into your future. There are many people who are listening to this. There are many people who will listen to this for whom this message is intended and appointed for you for today. It is intended and appointed for you today to take it to the next level. We're not supposed to just coast. We're not supposed to just, you know, hold on and you know maybe maybe you know just hold on and maybe it gets a little worse because we get a little older no keep going up keep going up 45 degrees yeah. everything's getting better everything's getting better it's getting better it's getting stronger and we're confessing into those divine appointments kathy chen i see you meeting people Divine, divine appointments are going to take place in Pennsylvania. Amen. You are going to meet people that you are supposed to meet. Amen. You are going to meet people who are going to help you get to the next place, and they're going to help you get to the next Amen. place. You're going to help them get to the next place. Amen. They're going to help you get to the next place. You're going to make some divine connections. Amen. Laura, bless those divine connections that she's going to make yeah. in Bible Amen. school. I bless those divine connections. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thanks, glory, 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 glory. Thank you. Marnie has favor. Marnie has favor at her work. She has favor at her work. And Marnie, you can go ahead and identify with Mr. Joseph. <laughs> Joseph, Joseph had to tough. Joseph was falsely accused. Joseph was thrown into prison. Joseph was, you know, McGee slapped all the time. But he continued to confess and continued to go to the top. Marnie, that's your trajectory. Marnie, you're going to the top. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Hallelujah. Patricia, you've got to help people and give people the hope that lies within you. There's hope. You have hope. You have encouragement. Mm -hmm. There are people in your family. There are people in your county. There are people throughout Ireland that need hope and encouragement. Hope and encouragement. They, they've been told that they're this and they're that. And, and if they take hold of that, it just allows them to mess up. Those wrong labels allow us to mess up. And they give us an excuse to mess up. You're going to peel those wrong labels off people. Peel those wrong labels. Peel that victimhood mentality mm -hmm. off of people and put on the new level, the new um, label that they're victors, mm -hmm. that they're overcomers, that they're like a cork in a bottle. You're going to rise to the top mm -hmm. in the county of cork. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Pastor Gigi, come on up. Mm -hmm. This is a good word. Are you excited? Okay, I'm excited because I already know it. So, <laughs> okay, it, it's good. Uh, plan fun. Ah. And the impression in my heart was that we're all wonderful and God loves all of us and we're responsible. We're doing all our responsible stuff, but God wants us to have more fun. Mm -hmm. And there needs to be a little bit more at least a little right. bit more excitement in our life. Yeah. And so what I was sensing 
was um, I want everybody, and this is for everybody on here, to think about at least one fun thing that you want to do and start adding a little bit more fun into your life. Mm -hmm. It's not just all about big Christian goals or, I mean, it is good to get people saved. It's good to get them healed. It's good to give words of knowledge, but also God wants us to enjoy life. And so it may be you plan a day to the beach once a week or once a month or every other week, something that you get excited about. And I feel like it's not just the really big excitement things of like, I'm going to plan a vacation every year. It may be that, but add into your life some smaller fun things. So I do want us all to take a few minutes to think about what are some of the smaller fun things I can do, like a weekly or a bi-weekly thing. Mm -hmm. It may be I'm going to uh, make a decision to call a friend and go out for a cup of coffee, either once a week or, or bi-weekly. Add more fun into your life. Yeah, and then you may think, oh, that's for everybody else, not me. No, I believe that's actually for all mm -hmm. of us. God loves how serious we are. He loves that we accomplish stuff, but he also wants us to enjoy life. So if you didn't, something didn't come to you while I was speaking, then sometime today before you go to bed tonight, I want you to think about that and, and kind of just plan. Again, it's not really a ministry thing. I believe he wants you to kind of come up with something that's fun for you. What is fun for you? Where your heart kind of goes, oh, I'm so excited I get to go do that. Mm -hmm. Whatever it is, plan it, go for it. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's my it thing. Yes. You see. Amen. So make sure you're on gallery view so that you can see everybody. And, um, let's uh, go ahead and if you have words of knowledge or something that's important to add on. I want to hear. I got, I got some. I got something that'll fit right in with your message. Do you want to hear it? Yes. Okay. So, like, anyways, Pastor, I, when Pastor Brad was speaking, I kept getting this thing. Okay, and I didn't know why I was getting it, but then at the very end, it kind of was made really clear. Is that you know, I love the water. I love to be in the water. I love to be in the ocean. I love to be in the pool. I love to be in the lake. Whatever. I love the water. So I wanted to take um, um, snorkeling and also to take um, diving. So I was going to do the diving class uh, in high school. We were in the pool and they, the, the instructor was talking about most important things are, you know, making sure that your oxygen is correct, making sure that you've got enough oxygen in your tank to make sure that you, you your, your ratios are fine. But he said one thing that's very important. He said, you're not going to understand this when you're in the pool situation, but when you go deep sea diving and you're down really low, it gets really, really dark and you don't know what's up and you don't know what's down. You get disoriented. He said this, he said, the most important thing I'm going to tell you is this, bubbles up, bubbles up. And I thought to myself, okay, he goes, well, he goes, why am I telling you bubbles up? He said, because when you get disoriented in life, disoriented in the water, you see, you see, you, you follow the bubbles, you, you breathe out and the bubbles go up and you follow the bubbles up from wherever you're at, up, up to the top of water. He said, otherwise you can go down, you can go sideways. But he said, the, when you're disoriented in life and in the water and things are not, that clear and things are a little bit confusing, follow the bubbles. So when Pastor Brad was talking, I thought to myself, yeah, praise God. I'm going to, I'm going to confess positive. I'm going to think positive. I'm going to pray positive. And those bubbles are going up to God. Right. Mm -hmm. So I was really excited. The bubbles up. So when you ever, you're dis, you know, you go, go through anything that's disorienting in life and you're not sure what decisions to make, just keep confessing positive and bubbles, up, bubbles up, bubbles up. You're going to, you're going to come through it. And it's going to be okay, and and you're going to follow the Holy Spirit and wherever He leads you. So just whenever you're in a decision, a situation where you're not sure what decision to make, just pray and believe God bubbles up, and you'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. All right, that like kind of fits in with Brad's message. I like it. Yeah, bubbles up. 